Beta-lactamase inhibitors are pharmaceutical countermeasures which we deploy in order to neutralize bacterial enzymes, the beta-lactamases, which degrade some of our most important antimicrobials, the beta-lactams. Beta-lactamase inhibitors do not target essential physiological functions of bacteria. Instead, when combined with the beta-lactams, these drugs which act on the bacterial cell wall, we see potentiation of their activity. So our beta-lactams are a very important class of drugs, and they act by binding to the penicillin-binding proteins in the cell wall. Many bacteria have developed resistance to the beta-lactams through the production of degradative enzymes, or beta-lactamases. And bacteria deploy these in order to degrade our drugs. So a bacterial beta-lactamase uh, cleaves the four-membered beta-lactam ring, inactivating the drug and preventing it from having activity on the cell. When we combine our beta-lactams with the beta-lactamase inhibitor, what we do is actually bind up the beta-lactamase before it's able to have its action on our beta-lactam drug, allowing that penicillin or cephalosporin to go on and kill the organism as we would like it to. There's a variety of beta-lactamases that organisms can produce, and they are not all the same. There's quite a lot of diversity. Broadly, they're broken down into four classes, class A, B, C, and D. Our class A enzymes are serine beta-lactamases, our penicillinases produced by gram-positives like Staphylococcus aureus, and then many of our enzymes produced by our enterobacteriales, so TEM, SHV, our CTXM type ESBLs, and the KPC, SME, and GES carbapenemases. Our class B enzymes are metallobeta-lactamases, and these are our carbapenemases, the New Delhi metallobeta-lactamase, VIM, and IMP. Our class C are also serine beta-lactamases, and these are limited again to gram-negative bacteria. One of our most prominent members of the AMP C group would be CMY2, which is frequently observed in enterobacteriales. And then finally, we have our class D beta-lactamases. These are our oxacillinases. And throughout the entire family, there's a very broad hydrolytic spectrum. So from oxa-1, which is relatively narrow spectrum, to some of our oxacillinases with carbapenemase activity, like oxa-48. So how do our beta-lactamase inhibitors match up with the different types of enzymes? Well, our classically available ones, so clavulanic acid, sulbactam, and tazobactam, which are available in preparations with these penicillins and cephalosporins, are able to inhibit narrow-spectrum class A beta-lactamases, so just a subset of the enzymes which can be produced and encountered in clinical practice. This is obviously really problematic, particularly as we've seen an increase in the incidence of carbapenemase producing bacteria, and this has led to the development of some new beta-lactamase inhibitors. So avibactam, which is available in human medicine combined with ceftazidime, has been more recently developed and is active against class A, C, and D enzymes, providing much greater protection than its predecessors. The development of new beta-lactamase inhibitors is an active area of research, and no doubt new compounds will be added to this list. I hope this explanation was helpful, and if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. <laughs>